Finally, let's talk about agriculture in the north. The northwestern part of the United States, what we call today the Big West, uh, the, the Big Ten, I'm sorry, uh, country, the, the area around the Great Lakes, um, will remain agricultural uh, and become a growing part of the new economy. So as the east coast, the northeast coast, is industrializing, uh, they are getting their food from the northwest. The northeast cannot compete agriculturally with the northwest. The leading wheat states in 1840 are New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Virginia. Uh, in 1860, they're Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Michigan. Uh, same is true for cattle. Uh, so the, the production of food is moving uh, for, from the east to the west. Well, what's going on? Well, some farmers uh, move west uh, because the land is more fertile. Some farmers in the east are drawn to the cities. They give up farming and they move into the cities. Some become truck farmers because it is very difficult to transport fruits and vegetables without them going bad at this time. Uh, you can grow fruits and vegetables around the big cities of the east and then put them on a truck, this is of course a horse-drawn truck, and take them into the city and sell fresh fruit and vegetables. That is a, a way to make a living. But if you're trying to grow wheat or cattle, you're probably getting killed uh, by the more productive land uh, to the west of you. Cleveland and Cincinnati are the key cities here. Uh, Chicago begins to become prominent, but it won't really be until the railroads take over that Chicago becomes the major city. Um, as a transportation and meatpacking hub. Um, Chicago will also eventually become one of the leather capitals of the world is, is because that's where they slaughter the cows to pack the meat. Um, and of course whiskey and flour will also be, uh, be major industries uh, in this region. The Native Americans are actually still the majority population of the region. Um, but of course whites have now moved in in large numbers. The Midwestern farmer is pretty prosperous on average. They're living a pretty good life. They're doing well. The Industrial Revolution you may think of as being in conflict with the farmers. It's not. It works along with them. Uh, for example, it creates gigantic markets. As all those people pour into the cities in New York City and Philadelphia and Boston and all the other cities get bigger and bigger and bigger, they have to eat. And so the farmers are the ones feeding them, so their profits go up and up and up. But probably more importantly, the Industrial Revolution leads to better and better farm equipment. So with a smaller amount of labor, you can produce more and more work. In the 1840s and 1850s will be a great decade to be a farmer. The South, if you notice, is being left out of this. There are not good transportation methods of getting stuff from the South to the North. And the South doesn't really grow food anyway. And so what's happening is the economy of the North and the Northwest, Northeast and Northwest, are growing together and becoming one. And the South is being left out on their own. Uh, that's going to cause problems later, as you probably know. Experimentation in seed leads to increased yield. Uh, if you don't know this, uh, farmers have been crossbreeding plants for, well, as long as history's been going along. Hogs and sheep are imported, and we begin to see more and more hogs and sheep being uh, raised and, and uh, uh, slaughtered or sheared. The cast iron plow was invented. Uh, complete with replaceable parts. This is introduced by John Deere. In fact, this was John Deere's great first great contribution um, is a better plow, a tougher plow. Actually, I'm sorry, John Deere introduces the steel plow, which is even better than the cast iron plow. Cyrus McCormick produces the reaper. Um, this is it down here. This has McCormick on it. And this is something that harvests wheat simply by being pulled across a field by a, by a, by a horse in 1847. Uh, and by 1860, there's 100,000 of these things in use. Before the reaper, you had to walk through the, the crop with a sickle and cut it. That's the thing that death carries, basically. It's a shorter version of that um, in, in cartoons and stuff. And then you had to go with a cradle and pick up all that had been cut. And then you had to beat the, the wheat out of, out of what you cut. The reaper does all that for you. It's pulled by a horse. Takes six men, uh, And now six men can do what it used to take 15 men to do. The thresher separates the grain from the wheat. Jerome Case manufactures this uh, in, in Racine, Wisconsin. And so you no longer have to beat the wheat out of the grain. You now have a machine to do it. And so farming has become much easier thanks to advances in technology. Farmers tend to be populist. They are property conscious, meaning what they care about is land. Abraham Lincoln, who was a Whig politician in the 1840s, will say this, I take it that it is best for all to leave each man free to acquire property as fast as he can. When one starts poor, as most do in the race of life, free society is such that he knows he can better his condition, 
He knows that there is no fixed condition of labor for his whole life. So the farmer believes that the ability to acquire new land is the key to prosperity. <coughs> Further west, if we go past the Great Lakes, it's more isolated. Um, uh, most, uh, so people out there tend to live in farms far from their neighbors. And the only real social interaction they probably see is going to come through church. Not only church on Sunday, but dances, weddings, funerals, baptisms. Uh, women will go to prayer meetings. Um, and this will be what society will tend to revolve around. They will work together. They are cooperative people. If somebody needs to build a barn, everybody will come together and build the barn together. Harvesting of crops is not done individu by individual farm. It's done as one giant mass effort. Husking corn, threshing wheat. Uh, these are done in a communal way. You bring, everybody brings their corn in and everybody husks it together, for example. Women would have bees, quilting bees, baking bees, preserving bees. Uh, and they call them bees because they were like bees in the sense that they all work together like bees in a hive. To quilt, uh, everybody would, would quilt together and they would, were able to make more that way. There was no real popular culture. What's going on in the East, they're barely aware of. But they were very excited by it. They would treasure news. Uh, they got a letter from maybe somebody who had gone East. Or they got a hold of a magazine or a newspaper or a catalog of goods from the East. That was very exciting. But as the East and the Midwest are growing, the Far West, uh, and the South for that matter, are becoming more and more isolated. America is changing and these parts of the country are simply being left out. <clears throat> 